You know, it really is wonderful the way our two families have been intertwined over the generations. I really believe we are the backbone of Pine Valley. Oh, Phoebe, come on. There are lots of fine old families in Pine Valley. Certainly. The Tuckers and the Baxters, the Nelsons, the Claters. Mm, what about your friends, the Ramses? Mm. Oh, well, darling Juanita, of course, of course. Oh, how about the Cortlands and the Chandlers? Oh, surely you jest. Why, they're just newcomers in my book. <laughs> oh, Phoebe. Oh, they've brought a lot of excitement to our town. Which I, for one, could have done without. It's history now, Phoebe. Spirit from beyond, please. Daisy. Daisy. Mother of Nina. Daisy. Come back to us. We beseech you. Nina calls. Nina calls to her mother. I didn't want to upset you. I understand. Just as long as you accept the whole thing in your mind. That's the only thing I care about. And the idea that one day, there will be two rings on their hands. Cliff, I can't wait. <laughs> Phoebe, who is that woman? Which woman? The one in the red mask.
thanks to Zerika Kane, Martin, Brent, Cuddy, Chandler, Montgomery. Oh, look at the young lovers. Oh, I see. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to find mine. Oh, I hope it's going to be her and Devona. Oh, well, it's about time. Hello. Here I am, Jim. Hello. Hi. Hi, I didn't keep you waiting. Oh, we're just glad you finally got here. Oh, now you know you're never on time. Well, surely you didn't start without us. Honey, we were late. We were late because I was waiting for you, Mother. Sweetheart, I was downstairs for 15 minutes. Never mind, let's just forget it, all right? Well, now, how far did you go? Well, here we are, right there. Don't worry about it, darling, because nobody could ever forget you. <laughs> you know, I really can't blame America for letting her looks be so important. You know, when you look at the rest of her life, what she got? Erica, you should have called me. Oh, well, I couldn't. By the way, Chuck's coming over later. Oh, are you here again? <laughs> Erica? Yes, Erica, but not for long. I'm uh, almost leaving. Are you going out again? Well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how we feel. Now that she has that car, I never know where she is. Sometimes she goes four or five places in one evening. Well, you gotta go where the action is, Mona. Isn't that right, Erica? When there is any. I mean, Pine Valley <laughs> isn't exactly the corner of Hollywood and Vine. No. Yeah. Well, I've been on that corner. It's not all it's cracked up to be. When I decide on a man, he's gonna have success written all over him before our marriage even starts. And when he makes it, I'm gonna be just what he bargained for. Erica, why don't you get off your high horse and come down here with the rest of us? I don't want to be down anywhere with, with the rest of you. I want to be special, and I'm going to be. What you're going to be is miserable if you keep expecting everybody to fall in line with your ways. Hey, are we having a hamburger or another attack on Erica? Do you have to be the one that everybody likes best to make sure that they like you at all? Yes. Only I had a husband who loved me. Really loved me. What are you doing? Over here. Huh? Yeah, that's better. You're awful. <laughs> but you love it, don't you? Yeah. Was that the doorbell? What did it be at this hour? I haven't the faintest idea. Erica! Erica, where are you? Erica! 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 Will you marry me? You want to marry me? Because I'm sick? No. No, I want to marry you. Because you're the most beautiful, exciting, and desirable woman I've ever known. I want to marry you, Nick. You lied to me. You told me all along you wanted to have a baby. And all the time these were stuck in the back of your drawer. I was going to go off I really was. No. No, it's too late. Because I don't care if you choke on these pills. Don't say that. I told you after your disco deceit that if you lied to me one more time, that that would be the end of our marriage. But I didn't lie to you. You lied to me every time you took one of those pills. It's really getting embarrassing. What is? Somebody really should tell you. Tell me what? You're getting hard of hearing. Well, I guess you're right. I, I have been foolish. You just need a little hearing aid. You know, one that you just put behind your ear. Yes, I know. Okay, well, my advisor, my advisor at school says that I'm really talented and that I should major in drama. You? Talented? Uh-huh. And she also says that I'm beautiful. Beautiful? <laughs> Oh, you're, you're not even blonde. 
Well, I could dye my hair like you. You're not worth the expense. I know this woman. I'm thinking of taking you out of school. Because I know this woman. Uh, her name is Phoebe Tyler. She's very, very rich. And she needs a laundress. It's a perfect, perfect job. job for a plain Jane like you. This is preposterous. What's wrong? Well, this is ridiculous, Erica. I mean, none of this stuff is in, in your book, and it certainly doesn't belong on any screen. Well, I think it's right on target. I wrote it myself. You what? Yes, I did. It's a scene from the screenplay. I rewrote it to make it more realistic. Well, there's nothing real about it. Well, that's just because you're not a good actress. But once somebody good is doing the lines, then it's going to be wonderful. I warn you, Erica. If any of this appears on the screen, I'll sue you. Mother, Judith Anderson is considering playing the part. Of course, she'll have to wear a blonde wig. You know, I suggest that you stick to acting and stop trying to rewrite history. Poor well, Mother, you can't see yourself as she really is. I hope you didn't risk your life unnecessarily. Well, Mother, I had to take chances. I was the only one who had the gumption to try to escape. And the dumbest thing that she did was run into the jungle without any survival equipment whatsoever. I even fought off a rape attempt, Mother, rape. But I never cracked under the strain. And in the final crunch, she froze. I'm there. One of the hijackers was trying to kill me. I had to yell to her to pick I something up and hit him over the I finally found out that Brooke would have offered her body to save herself. I really saw Brooke's true character, Mother. She is a cowardly little spineless little coward. It's a miracle that Erica came out of this with her life. I tell you, I wanted to strangle her. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. You have to get out fast. I'll think back first. Jeremy, help me. Oh, help me. I'll be all right. I'm so frightened. Come on. Thank you. Gotta get Erica. No. I can't leave her. I let go. I can't let you go. You fall. I've got to get to Erica. We'll get someone else to help her. Let go, Natalie. Got to get to Erica. Get out of this, Erica. Mark. I feel like I'm up. Mark. Mark, listen to me. Now listen to me. Listen to me. You have taken the first step. The first step, Mark. Look around you. You're not alone. No. These people are just like you. And look, they're fighting. They're fighting to get over it, to make their lives better. They're not giving up, Mark. And we won't let you either. Do you understand? We love you too much for that. We do.